This is a progressive neurological disease uh, that occurs in late adulthood and it is characterized by motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. The motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease can be divided into tremor, uh, which usually affects the hands, the jaw and the legs, and muscle rigidity or muscle stiffness, and slowness of movement, which is also known as bradykinesia. Non-motor symptoms of PD uh, is quite diverse and can range from anything from constipation, uh, other gastrointestinal manifestations, anxiety, depression, sleep problems, urinary disturbances, and fatigue. is uh, estimated to be between 22 to 23,000. And as you know, Parkinson's disease is an age-related uh, neurodegenerative disease. So we expect the prevalence to rise further in the subsequent years, especially when Malaysia reaches an uh, aging population nation in 2030. So with regards to non-motor symptoms, um, the commonest non-motor symptoms uh, depends on various population and constipation is one of the no commonest non-motor symptoms reported all over the world. And the prevalence is about 51% uh, to 80%. And based on our own study done in our center, among patients with Parkinson's disease, we found that constipation was prevalent in about 51% of patients with Parkinson's disease uh, who had the disease for about five years. is multifactorial. Firstly, it could be related to the lack of exercise due to the involvement of the movement because they have movement problems. Uh, sometimes they have lack of uh, food intake or water intake uh, due to the disease and sometimes it's due to lack of fiber. And the main reason why patients with Parkinson's disease would develop constipation is because Parkinson's disease affects the autonomic nervous system, which uh, is important to ensure gut movement or gut motility. So early on in, in the disease, the gut motility could be affected, causing constipation in these patients. Apart from that, studies have shown that um, there's alteration in the gut microorganism in patients with Parkinson's disease from very early on, even before the disease manifests. And this is what we call as gut dysbiosis. And this dysbiosis could contribute to abnormal uh, gut motility as well, therefore worsening constipation in patients with Parkinson's disease. So uh, th there are quite a number of conventional treatments for constipation as you would have in general population. So we could try the same conventional treatments such as um, bulk laxative uh, called Dufalac or Lactulose or contact laxative or stimulant laxatives. All these treatments uh, may be effective in small number of patients, but it comes with some side effects in the long run. And sometimes over the years, it may just cease to be effective. So apart from giving the patients laxative, we also advise them uh, generally to increase their fiber intake, fruits intake, drink adequate amount of fluid, and also keep hydrated and also exercise. And sometimes when all these measures do not work, uh, patients may require enema uh, to help them with the constipation problems. So there are some limitations to these uh, uh, medications, as I mentioned, some, some of them may not work for the patient. So patients uh, will ultimately require the use of enema to alleviate their constipation. And some patients may require almost two or three times enema per week to help with the constipation. These are symptomatic treatment and they're not intended for long-term use. Okay. Uh, basically, we know now that gut dysbiosis is an important driver for constipation in Parkinson's disease. There are some studies that have shown that uh, treating constipation with probiotics may be helpful for the patients. So that prompted us to uh, evaluate if our locally available probiotics could also be effective in our patients with constipation. 
we conducted a randomized control trial where we had recruited uh, Parkinson's patients with constipation and divided them into two groups, which is the MCP BCMC group. Uh, that's a prebiotic, a probiotic, prebiotic con a combination group, and the placebo group, which received the fermented milk. So from our study, we found that uh, patients who received the probiotic had improvement in their bowel opening frequency compared to those who received the placebo at the end of the trial. So what we found was MC, uh, MCP, BCMC improved the mean weekly bowel movement up to five times a week compared to only 2.8 times per week in the placebo group. And it also reduced the use of enema in, in patients with Parkinson's disease significantly. And in addition, there was improvement in the gut motility the, by um, reduction in the gut transit time from 132 hours to 77 hours in the, in the group which received this product. We have to follow the clinical protocol which we used. So we had used two sachets daily for eight weeks. So that would be the recommended dose uh, to relieve constipation. And beyond that, uh, I perhaps would advise patients to take one sachet every other day or uh, regularly, although not in the same dose, to maintain their gut health. Because we do not have long-term data on the use of this uh, MCP, BCMC uh, in patients with Parkinson's disease beyond eight weeks. I think it would benefit them because we know that taking probiotics would help in maintenance of gut health. So since it has helped the patients with uh, constipation, I would recommend that they take it uh, every now and then, maybe once every uh, other day or a few times a week uh, to maintain their gut health. Yes, I think there are some positive studies which has shown that probiotics could improve motor severity scores and inflammatory marker scores, although we did not test that in our study. But there is a possibility that taking probiotics regularly uh, could improve the Parkinsonism motor symptoms as well. But we need stronger evidence for this. Basically, what uh, we have shown is that MCP, BCMC uh, could improve constipation in patients with Parkinson's disease. And as you know, constipation is a number one of the most common non-motor symptoms and it really affects the quality of life of the patients. And this would be one of the recommended medications which has evidence base that could be uh, used for, to alleviate Parkinson's, uh, sorry, to alleviate constipation in patients with Parkinson's disease. Other than that, as we know that gut dysbiosis occurs in patients with Parkinson's disease, perhaps by taking this uh, MCP, BCMC, it could improve uh, the gut dysbiosis that is occurring in patients with Parkinson's disease and thus improve uh, the overall uh, well-being of these patients. It's definitely the case because I think we cannot assume that all probiotics are the same. I think we have to go by which probiotic has been tested and in with the robust in a robust uh, clinical trial design, which is a randomized control trial, and to see which one of the is effective. And if you can extrapolate from the contents of the probiotics, you could also choose uh, appropriately which probiotics could potentially improve patients with Parkinson's disease.